Hello, welcome to another edition of the Author's Corner with Stephanie Carter. I am your host and I am so thankful for you joining me today. Why don't you do me a favor and like and share this broadcast. Hit the thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you're on Facebook, if you follow us at Steph Publishing and hit the like button there because uh, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful show. I am going to introduce to you Mrs. Gloria J. Cunningham. And I want to just say full disclosure, she is one of my best-selling author clients. She is a number one best-selling author with her book, her first book entitled Remembering Home. And I don't want to uh, tell you anything about it right now because I'm going to have her explain what Remembering Home is all about. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you and welcome to Author's Corner, Mrs. Gloria J. Cunningham. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great today. Great, great, great. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I know that you are excited about being a number one bestseller with your book, Remembering Home. So why don't you tell the audience what is Remembering Home all about and why did you name it Remembering Home? Well, um, I grew up in the South um, and my Growing up was very unique. Um, we just grew everything that we ate and, you know, it was a wonderful experience. And I just wanted to share with everyone um, my experiences growing up in the South and then moving to uh, Washington, D.C., to the big city, something I was not even used to. So I wanted to, I've always wanted to write about my childhood and how special my childhood was to me and, and just to share that with, with, with my readers. Now, where exactly in the South did you grow up? I grew up, I grew up in Lenore, North Carolina, better known as the Tar Hill State. I grew up on a farm and uh, we just had cows, chickens, pigs, ducks, horses. We had, you know, just so many um, fruit trees, apple trees, peach trees, you name it, we, we grew it. And so I'm just, you know, wanted to always share that with, with, with everyone because I'm just so proud of it. Well, that's wonderful that you are proud of what a lot of people would consider humble beginnings, but you had a very close knit family unit. And you mentioned a lot about your grandfather and your grandmother and your mother. Why don't you talk and uh, discuss and tell our audience, not everything, because we want you them to read the book, but just <laughs> to give a little bit of insight into your family. Well, um, I grew up uh, on a small farm with my mother and my grandparents and uh, my siblings. My grandfather was uh, a worksman, a builder, and my grandmother was a gardener. So we did everything that we ate, and it was just so close knit. We didn't really know anything else, and that's why I you when you said before uh, humble beginnings. It was a humble beginning because we we didn't know anything else. We. Um, we wasn't experienced as far as the outside world was concerned because we were just on this farm and, you know, that's all that we knew. Um, so I just really wanted to just share that with everyone. And, you know, because it's, it's to share and it's, it's a lot to share at the same time. And remembering home, uh, it talks about not, it's basically your autobiography because it talks about your humble beginnings. And like you said, uh, how you moved to the big city and you said big city. So which, which, which big city did you move to? Well, I moved to Washington, DC, uh, in the early seventies, lived there for a couple of years before to uh, Maryland, but I'm spent uh, a couple of years uh, with my sister and, and my brother-in-law. They were both military, so that really that's really what brought me to D.C. And you know, once I got here and and experienced, I guess what you call city life opposed to the country life, 
it was very exciting. It was very new and it was a, quite an adjustment for me. Oh, I bet it was. And how old were you? Well, when I first came to see, I was 15. I spent the summer here, uh, visited all the museums, uh, went back home, came back here for the 11th grade, uh, went to Coolidge High School in the 11th grade, but I wanted to graduate from home. So I went back home, graduated, went to college down there for a year. And then I realized that this is, I want more. So I'm back here in 73 and I've been here ever since. Wow. Wow. So, um, with your moving up here and the had to have been a huge adjustment, uh, from living in the, basically it was the Hills of North Carolina and moving up <laughs> to, uh, Washington DC where you uh, stayed and you actually built your, your home here, your life here, where you met your husband here and you have your, your children and your, your great grands and now a great grandson. So you, yeah. you, you really, you really have, um, uh, just completed a, just a journey from, from North Carolina to here. Now you say remembering home. Okay. So why, why do you feel compelled to remember where you came from? Well, like I said before, it was a humble beginning for me. Um, I just want my readers to know, you know, the way I did grow up. Uh, I grew up on this farm, you know, grew up raising everything. Um, and moving to the city was quite an adjustment for me. And I wanted to, I've always wanted to write about my childhood because my childhood was very unique. It was very special. It was very different. Um, so I've always wanted to share that. Well, at first I wanted to just share it with the family. I wanted us to have a keepsake. But then as I was writing, I realized that this is something that I would want to share, you know, with the world, uh, just to let know what it was like to grow up in the country. And, and if you think about it, a lot of people that live in the city came from the country. You know, they moved from the South, they moved to the North. And I'm, I wanted to relate, be able to relate to them you know, to see how I grew up, you know, on the farm. And even if I didn't grow up on a farm, it was still different than growing up in the South than growing up in the North. So I just really wanted, I thought it was just something that I wanted to share with those that might not know or understand or appreciate what growing up is in the South was all about. Because you have some people say, well, I, I couldn't grow up like that. I couldn't, I couldn't form. I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. Well, if when that's all that you know, then yes, you can. Right. And I just appreciate it so much. And if I had any, if I had a chance to change it, I wouldn't change a thing. Mm. I really wouldn't. And I, ex I express that to my children, which I don't think being that they grew up in the city, that they would be able to appreciate it like I did. But it's something that I can share to my children, to my grandchildren, and in generations to come. And I, uh, I always ask authors what their target audience is. And I think you just answered the question. Your target audience is for individuals who may not know how it is to live or grow up on a farm or grow up yes. outside of the city and that it gives them a little perspective of how it g was. But I also think that it's important because you said there were, are, there are a lot of people that live in the city that grew up in the country. And so there might be a lot of people out there that might relate to your story. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. I really think that they can relate um, because I do have some friends. I mean, I ran into people I'm from time to time saying, well, yeah, I grew up on the South and yeah, we grew this or we grew that or we did, you know, we played those type of games or, you know, we ate that food or, you know, we grew those vegetables. And they also talk about how their grandmother, grandfather, great grandmother, great grandfather, how, you know, they disciplined 
their children and, you know, the old sayings that they would use um, mm. that you might not know what those sayings meant if you didn't grow up in the South. So I really think that the my readers that grew up in the South will really be able to relate um, and those that didn't will be able to appreciate um, that type of life because it was fresh, special um, to me. And it's just what I just want to share with my readers. Very nice. And you had named some some foods that I had never heard of, one of them being liver mush. And so, so I was like, what is that? I had to look up what that, what that was. But that's, uh, you said that's, that was just something that was so good. So I think it would be educational for a lot of readers, especially maybe those of the, of the younger generation that may not know what some of those foods that you ate back in the day yeah. uh, was. But uh, obviously it was very, very good. <laughs> and you, you enjoy yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I just returned from uh, the south. Uh, we went down there on some business, and of course, I ate some liver mush. Uh, and uh -huh. you know, just for the readers, you know, the liver mush came from the pigs that we grew. In South Carolina, it's called liver pudding. Okay. Here in Maryland, D.C., the metropolitan area, it's called scrapple. So oh, if you know what okay, now I know is, what Scrapple is. I know what that is. Okay. But the difference is liver must has, uh, it has more texture than Scrapple. As a matter of fact, I fixed some Scrapple for my husband this morning, and it just falls apart. Mm, Where when okay. you cook liver mush, it's, it, the texture of it, it stays together. And... To me, there's no comparison, mm. but it's good with eggs, grits, uh, fried potatoes. So it's, <laughs> it's something like a, like you would eat with bacon, but instead of mm. having bacon, you know, we would have liver mush, even though we had bacon too, because that comes from the pig as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what liver mush is. Well, that is uh, that's the education for me. So thank you for explaining that to me. Uh, so this is your first book. Uh, you said you uh, yeah. just didn't you you had said over and over again. I just can't believe that this is happening. You have now published your book. It is now released. So what is uh, the future? Do you plan on releasing any more books? Yes, I do. I've, I've been thinking about it. I've been praying about it. And just, you know, right now I want to write a more in-depth book because when I first started out, I was writing my autobiography. And so there's, when you're writing your autobiography, you know, you basically write about yourself, even though you write about, you know, I wrote about growing up. But right. my next book will be a more in-depth book, a more in-depth out, you know, more of the things that I did as growing up as a child. And I will also write about more experience that I had, you know, here, my life here, because I've, I've been here the majority of my life. So a lot of things has happened <laughs> within the, the, the last 40 some years that I've been here. So I really want to write more about that and you know just whatever else that the lord puts on my heart to write about but yes i do definitely plan to write another book in the very near future oh awesome awesome okay so remembering home is now available and so um mrs cunningham please tell the audience where they can purchase your book my book can be purchased on amazon.com I also have uh, an ebook that that can be purchased there as well. The paperback book is uh, available on Amazon.com. So please, I just ask you to you know go out there, uh, purchase the book, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, and it's I wrote this book with a lot of love, a lot of passion, and I just highly recommend it to all of my readers. Okay, well you heard it. 
straight from Mrs. Gloria J. Cunningham. Uh, you can purchase her book, uh, her, her first book entitled Remembering Home. It is available in ebook as well as paperback on Amazon.com. You can type in J- Gloria J. Cunningham or you can type in Remembering Home. Well, I want to just say I appreciate you and thank you so much for joining uh, me on the Author's Corner. Can you please just leave a final word of inspiration for any new authors or people who are thinking about writing a book or even writing about their their story? Can you leave a little inspiration for them? Yes. um, I would say, you know, if everyone has a story to tell, whether you grew up in the South or you grew up in the North or you grew up, you know, overseas, everyone has a childhood. Everyone has experienced different things in their childhood to adulthood. So I just encourage you, no one can tell your story like you can. Everyone has a story. And I've been um, just talking to my friends and just telling them, you know, you have a story to tell and no one can tell it like you. So I've been just trying to influence them into to writing a book it, as well, because you'll be surprised once you sit down and you start writing the things that come back to your remembrance, mm-hmm. you know, happy things, you know, things that you did with your family that you want to share with with others. It's, it's really nothing like it. And even if you have to get some help from your loved ones to help you remember these things. You know, it's, it's a joyous thing to do. So I do really encourage you to just pick up a pen, start writing, you know, you know, do your draft. You know, you can go back and make changes, make corrections, but just sit down and start writing the first thing that comes to your mind. And as you go on, you can put it all together. It will all come together. So just, you know, do it with um, patience and, you know, you surprise as to what will go down on that paper once you start writing. So yes, I do encourage you to please write. Wow, that's wonderful advice. And while you were talking, I just thought of legacy. Just think if things are written, it is written, it's a record. And it's a record for this generation and generations to come. You know, I mentioned that you have a great grandson. You know, when he grows up, he will be able to see what his grandmother and his great grandmother, his great great grandmother, what they did while they were living, because you took the time yes. to publish this book. So that yes. is um, that's yes. something that uh, I have a mission now to do and to get more people to to publish their story because it is history. It's your history. It is really is. And it's, it's something that you can just pass on, like you said, for generations to come. And a lot of times we don't know how our great grandparents grew up. We don't know how our great great grandparents grew up, you know, because it was never told. And then as people, you know, pass on, if that information is not shared, then you never know. So I try to gather forever. as much information as I can now. And then that way they can say, well, this is how my great grandmother grew up and this is what she did as a child. And that will encourage them to write as well, you know, because generations go on and on and on as long as we continue to walk this earth. And until, you know, Jesus comes back, you know, we all have a story to tell. We all have a story to tell. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. (laughs) Well, thank you. I want to thank you. Uh, for joining me today on the author's corner congratulations on being an amazon number one bestseller and i it, it was just a pleasure working with you and i just know that you have great things in store to come we look forward to the other projects that you will be releasing in the next couple years so thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much audience for joining me once again for another segment of the author's corner and i just want to say take care and bye-bye